I like cameras that serve a specific function. This is my collection of cameras, and each camera here offers something the others do not. Well, you see, I'm the type of person who wants to optimize my camera collection, so I don't want to be owning two cameras that serve the same function. However, like everything, cameras age with time, and as technology progresses, some become forgotten or sadly put away into one of those drawers somewhere, never to be shot again. But I guess that's just not always the case, because recently I've been seeing a popularity boom for digital camcorders from the early 2000s. So this here is my camcorder from my early childhood, and yeah, I just found it in one of those drawers. I think the reason why people are gravitating towards these old camcorders again is for that sense of nostalgia. People love nostalgia, whether that be in the way they dress, the way they listen to music with vinyl records, or even for myself, I shoot film for photography. So I totally understand that sense of nostalgia, but does this camera serve a function that none of my other cameras do? And does it earn a place in my camera collection? At a quick glance of the camera, the stickers on the side kind of tell me what to expect. Okay, let's see. We have a whopping 65 times dynamic zoom, where 38 times is the optical and the rest digital. Next to this, we have super low lux. I'm assuming that this refers to its low light capability. So next up, we have optical image stabilization. Now, this is actually really handy to have, and it just makes your footage a lot more viewable. So last but not least, we have a SD card slot, which comes with a free 16 gigabyte SD card, which I'm actually surprised because that card is still in the camera today. What this camera cannot do though, is shoot today's standard for video, which is 4K footage. My Fuji can shoot 4K, my GoPro can shoot 4K, even my phone can shoot in 4K, but this camera here can only shoot in full HD. But does size matter? Well, for a video and content creator on YouTube and other platforms, I think 4K resolution is a very nice thing to have. Knowing that you have the extra resolution to always crop into your footage is a very nice thing to have. But maybe that's just not the point of this camera. If we were to compare these cameras by specs, clearly my digital camcorder is far less superior in every single way. So why is it so popular? In my experience, I purchased the newest iPhone on the market to make these YouTube videos. The iPhone 13 Pro offers immensely good video capability, but at what cost? All the small buttons that I have to press to get my camera ready to shoot in the right settings, and the constant distractions of notifications often take me out of my focus zone when I'm filming. Basically, I don't enjoy shooting with my iPhone camera. I think it's a great camera to have as it's always in your pocket, but it's strictly my backup camera. So clearly the shooting experience is quite an important factor for me. This camcorder quite literally turns on by flipping the screen and is ready to record in seconds. This simplicity feels refreshing. This camera was intended to be fully operational with just one hand, so the zoom dial on the top and record button on the back are nice and easy to access. When the camera is closed, it's quite surprisingly small. The design of these camcorders allow it to easily slip into your daily bag and not be in the way of your daily life. Maybe the popularity doesn't lie in the specs of the camera, but in the style and ease of use. Wow. Are you hearing these birds right now? So I figured out that the function of this camera is not to take a roll footage like I'm doing here with my Fuji camera, but something else. So I'm gonna try to figure that out by bringing it on a road trip to Melbourne. Um, I haven't been on a plane in two years, so this is gonna be exciting. Yeah. So I'm back from my Melbourne trip and yeah, I have a lot of footage on this little camcorder here. I need to somehow figure out how to download this footage onto my computer, but the touchscreen on this thing's 
really, it's very non-sensitive. I mean, fair enough, this is probably one of the first touch screens for one of these cameras. So I tried just popping my SD card into the computer and I don't really know where the video files are. So I'm a little bit worried. There seems to be all the pictures, like the images from what was stored on it like 10 years ago or so. Um, yeah, I need to figure this one out. Alright, I struggled with it for a little bit, but I figured it out. There's this random file and there's no icon or anything. You know, it just opens up this random little software that it's got through QuickTime Player. Open each video file and then I have to save each one individually. Yeah, let's review some of the footage then, shall we? This footage feels raw and unpolished, but in the best way possible. Light reacts harshly but beautifully to the lens, creating some strong highlights, but I don't mind it at all. Color is represented a lot different to how my other cameras would capture it. Neon colors in low light are surprisingly rich and saturated, while broad daylight footage can sometimes feel a bit flat with little contrast. What makes me smile the most is seeing me having fun with the zoom capability of this camera. This big zoom in and out is such an iconic look for this era of digicams in the early 2000s and it makes me reminisce on my childhood. It's just lighthearted and nostalgic. Well, honestly, yeah, I think I can understand why these cameras are so popular now. This camera just serves a different type of function to the others. Not to capture the highest quality image, but to capture moments in which my other cameras simply cannot. Let me explain. The design of this camera is small and simple. When I bring it into events and just with in a social gathering, I can pull it out and it doesn't make anyone feel intimidated or nervous as one of my bigger, maybe more expensive cameras would do. The simplicity of this camera with its design and style, it's, um, it's just very friendly and it allows me to capture these intimate and genuine moments with my friends and other people. And I think that in itself is quite special. The footage I got from this camera felt very lighthearted and real. All of this works just really well together with the nostalgic, old school style video footage you get from this camera. So at this point in the video, it leads me back to my original question. Does this old digital camcorder have a place in my camera collection? Well, yeah, I think so. Welcome to the collection, buddy. What do you think about this new fisheye lens that I got? Pretty cool, right?